Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be doing a first impressions review on the NARS Orgasm on the Beach Blush Palette. Oh my goodness. So if you want to see my thoughts on this, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. So I absolutely had to pick up the NARS Orgasm on the Beach Cheek Palette. If you go through the history of my channel and the videos that I've made, I've covered a lot of NARS cheek palettes. They always appeal to me so much. So I do feel as though I have a lot of experience with their cheek palettes and can give you pretty thorough opinions without even having tried it yet. So this is a first impression. So just be aware of that, but I have a lot of knowledge on NARS and their formulas. So let's get into it. This palette is currently available on Sephora. I got it a day early with early access since I'm Rouge, but it is available to everybody now. It looks like it only is currently available on Sephora. So this is going to be $59 and in it you get six cheek shades. Now it doesn't look like on the website that they specify what is a highlighter and what is a blush. So I'm going to tell you kind of my interpretations of them. This is a limited edition cheek palette that features an array of sun-kissed coral and golden shades. If you're not absolutely dying to have this, I will say a lot of times palettes like these from NARS do tend to go on sale. Of course, I can't guarantee that, but that's a pattern that I've noticed with NARS palettes, so maybe you might want to wait. But let's see how good this palette is first. <laughs> let's talk about the actual packaging itself. So it comes in this unicarton. It's a beautiful ombre pink. I know this really isn't that important, but I like it for photography purposes. This palette is made in Italy, which has the best cheek formulas in my opinion, and it has an 18 month shelf life. Now the actual component itself, it is a gorgeous mirrored component, not very camera friendly, this one, but it's super pretty in your collection to have out on your desk. And then of course you flip it over, you have it in the names of the shades and it will give you some details in all of that. Now of course, you know, NARS orgasm will never die. They don't care how much we say we're sick of it. Obviously, they're continuing to make it because we're continuing to buy them. And even though I'm like, okay, NARS orgasm, like, let it, let it rest. I'm still buying them. I still like the orgasm products that come out. But anyways, now this is a snap closure. Normally, the NARS packaging is pretty hard to open. This is one that seems improved. I don't know. I don't want to speak too soon here. You do have a big mirror. And then when you open it up, you get six cheek shades. I absolutely love the embossment. And of course, I was attracted to this because look how beautiful these colors look. It did start off with the embossment. That's the first thing that got me. And then I was like, oh, pretty colors too. I think this is kind of the best view of the shades that you are going to get here. So here are my interpretations of the colors, okay? You have two deep shades here at the end. These are going to be the top two swatches of my hand. These seem to be more of a satin finish. These two shades right here at the bottom next to the deeper shades, this seems to be more of a metallic kind of blush. Maybe not metallic, but it's definitely a shimmer finish here. Almost kind of lid toppery. I'm not sure. We'll see how that applies to the cheeks. And it seems to me that these two colors to the top are going to be highlighters. So I'd argue for blush formulas, two arguably more satin, the other two shimmery, and then two highlight. Um, as you can see, a close-up of the swatches here, they look absolutely stunning, but if you are not a fan of shimmery blushes or any blush with a sheen, this is not going to be the palette for you. When I posted about this when it first launched, a lot of you told me you were waiting because it also launched around the same time as the Pat McGrath blushes. I can tell you now, these are not similar to any of the Pat blushes in any sort of way, so if you were waiting to see if they were similar or not because you placed your pat order in the morning and then this launch in the afternoon. They're not the same at all from what I can tell. Very different formulations and this seems to be overall like a cheek palette. Without further ado, I'm going to get in just a little bit closer. On my skin, everything will be linked in the description box. I must say I did a really good random foundation combination today. The Koki Skin Perfect and the Haley's Beauty Reset Liquid Matte Foundation mixed together. What a flawless base and with my Huda powder to really blur everything amazing. I did though also use the Hourglass concealer and I just, I can't get on board with this. You see how thick it looks? Anyways, unimportant. Let's get into the goods over here. The first colors that I wanted to go into were the deeper shades. I want to apply them more to the back of my cheek to work almost as a contour just to see how pigmented they are. So we're going to go into this shade right here. I'm not really sure how the shade names are organized. I think that this, I don't know what this one is. We're just 
gonna do that. I'm using an Esam G53 for this. I'm gonna use this almost as like a contour shade. Okay, that did not pick up much product. There we go. Okay, hmm, it's interesting. So I thought that this was gonna be a scary formula and it's definitely not. I thought this would be for more deep skin tones, but you can see it's kind of light on me, pretty sheer. At least with this brush, I'm gonna try a different brush with the other color. And I wouldn't use this as a bronzer because it does look like it could be a little bit bronzery, but I don't think I'd use this all over my cheek because I do feel like it almost leaves an odd dark cast. I like the placement right where I put it. I did a good job with choosing that placement. It's rosy, it's a little bit sun-kissed. That's very pretty, though I don't think it's a color I'd reach for on the daily. I'm gonna try with this synthetic brush now. I just used natural hair Let's try with this synthetic brush. This is a blinged brush F14. And now we're gonna try this cherry kind of color right here. No fallout. I don't know why I'm tapping off my brush. It's like a gelée kind of formula. Okay, so this one definitely packs more pigment. Oh my goodness, am I gonna look crazy at the end of this? I am. Oh, that's really pretty. This one's gonna look good on the more medium to deep skin tone range. I'm not sure about this one. This one, maybe it was the brush. I'll go in again to see with this synthetic brush. It didn't pick up well on that Eason brush. Ooh, that's really pretty. And if you have a lighter skin tone, you can definitely blend that out. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna change the settings on my camera because I feel like you might be able to see the color better. There we go. You can definitely pick that up a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely gonna work if you have a like a light medium skin tone like myself. I'm gonna go back into this color to see if it was that brush. No, this color is just not, it's not giving me as much as I thought it was. I was hoping this would be great for a deeper complexion, but it's okay. I'm not in love with it. All right, let's move on to some more. I'm gonna use my Isam V50 because I really wanna play with these, what seem to be kind of like cheek toppers maybe. Let's find out. We're gonna start off with the pinky one. This is the orgasm shade. Oh, that's really pretty. This could have gone south. I was fearful that these might be more shimmery, but you know, they are gonna emphasize texture a little bit, but it's not bad. It's much more smooth than I thought it was gonna be. And it's not as intimidatingly shimmery as it looks when I swatched it. Oh, that's really gorgeous. I love that. Let me clean off this brush. Blends into the skin, very beautiful, and I love the glow that it's giving my cheek. Okay, now we're gonna go in with this shade, which is a little bit more peachy. This one is a little bit too highlighty for my preferences, but I feel like if you have a more fair skin tone, you will be more partial to this one. I definitely prefer the orgasm side. Oh, I love the shimmer on this. I don't find it to be overwhelming. I think, if, like I said, if you tend to stay away from shimmery blushes because you don't like the way they sit on this skin, you probably won't like this. But to me, this is a gorgeous shimmery blush formula. Now, they are shimmery though, I will say that. The satiny blushes over here to the side definitely don't carry the sheen that these two blushes have. So this is definitely a style. Okay, let's play with the highlights now. So we're gonna start off with the deeper highlight. I have my Kaleidos H1 brush. Let's see if it works on me. It does. You can see a very small cast. Like I could make it work, but this is definitely more suited towards medium skin tones, but you did see it blends in very nice to the skin and it looks pretty smooth. I like that. It's not my favorite highlight in the world, but it's pretty. It glid on the skin nice. We're gonna go into the light highlight now. See, this is definitely more for me. I like that a lot. And you know what, since we are already here, I'm just gonna put some on my eyelids as well, just to further test out the palette. Now, normally I wouldn't do this. For every day, you won't find me using blushes as eyeshadows just because I have so many eyeshadow palettes. But I do wanna show you the versatility in case you were curious. So we're going in with this darker shade, which isn't my personal favorite in the palette. It's just not what I was expecting it to be. You can see it is much more sheer. I was hoping that this would be nice, deep shade, but it just, doesn't translate, but it is pretty on the eyelids. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I like how this looks on the eyelids. We're gonna put some on the lower lash line as well. And let's add a little bit more of a reddish hue. This in the outer corner. Oof. This shade is the pigmented shade right here. This is a shade for deeper complexions. 
Wow, how fun. And the versatility of this formula, you could definitely make this work on somebody with a lighter skin tone and a deeper skin tone. So I really enjoy this color. I'm happy that this is in here. And then finally, I wanna use the peach everywhere. I mean, obviously this is intended as a cheek palette, so I'm not going to go too hard on it on how it works on the eyes, but it definitely works. If you really wanna create a kind of cohesive look, it's not the easiest to use. I'd rather use an eyeshadow, <laughs> but in a pinch, I mean, this is really, really pretty. So it is a nice look regardless. All right, I'm going to finish the rest of my makeup and I'll be back with my final thoughts about this guy. All right, I didn't feel the need to do much with my look. I put on a light lip, a little bit of lashes, and I love this look for the summertime. I think it's so fun. I think it's so simple to do. And as I was applying my makeup, I was like, trying to finalize my thoughts on this palette because I have two different brains, okay? One brain is me, the makeup lover. Then the other brain is me, the makeup reviewer. Like, what do we want to say to you? And I'm telling you right now, as a makeup lover, as a makeup consumer myself, I really love this palette. If you like glowy cheeks, this is an absolutely stunning palette. I do find it to be versatile for myself. What I really think is neat is you can actually probably mix and match these shades. Like this shade right here, while it is a bit poppy, I I would love to mix it with maybe this shade right here. So you can kind of customize, get a little bit more of a shimmery cheek, get more of a satin cheek. And I do think the highlighters are a great addition as well. And overall, I just love how glowy my cheeks look. This is a look that I like. And surprisingly, especially this shade right here, I love how it looks on the eyes as well. I love this cohesive look. And I see myself grabbing for this a lot this summer. I feel really happy about the purchase of this palette. Now, here is my makeup reviewer perspective coming to you guys. Is this an absolutely necessary palette? No, it is not, but it's a beautiful formula and I do feel like this palette does have a lot of versatility. In terms of skin tone versatility, I really can't speak on that. Obviously, I've only tried it on my own skin. I think that this shade would be suitable towards deeper skin tones. This shade disappointed me a little bit in that aspect. Like it looked okay on me, but I'm quite light. So if you have a deeper complexion and you've tried this, can you let me know down below in the comments so that I can pin it? You know, I feel bad. I'm telling you to buy all this makeup. I don't wanna tell you to buy this. You definitely don't need to. It's not a must have. But I will say this is definitely going to be a palette that I reach for a lot this summer. I really love this. I'm very happy with this. And I'm coming off of the Pat McGrath blushes that I reviewed yesterday. And I really, really loved those. But they are $38 each individually. For me, paying $59 for all of these options, I'm, I'm actually a little bit happier with, honestly. And these are very different than those blushes. They give a totally different look on the cheek. But I'm happy to have this this fresh cheek palette for this summer. I think it's a really fun one and I definitely think it's a good pickup if it's something that you're interested in and you think would fit in well with your collection. I've got to admit you guys, initially I did not want to like this palette. I kind of wanted to tell you that you don't need it, that it was just another NARS palette because I do feel that uh, lately, especially in the last year or two, NARS has been coming out with quite repetitive products, but this ignited something in me. I am very, very happy with it and I don't feel that it is a repetitive product. I I mean it is but I love it like this is a stunning palette I really was tough on this palette today in this review but at the end of the day kind of taking a step back looking at the colors looking at my cheeks I'm more than impressed so take that with a grain of salt do with that information what you will. So that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I am going on a sushi date tonight with Jose. So I will update you on the wear time with these probably in the description box or somewhere else. I don't know. I figure I'll just do it here. So I've been wearing the blush for about five hours and it, they definitely faded on my cheeks. So they're not going to be something extremely long wearing. If you're somebody where you have problems like holding color on the blush, I would recommend maybe putting a cream blush underneath because I did reapply and don't get me wrong the blush was still there I just have other blushes that don't need retouch so soon so I don't think the longevity is bad like you can still see it on my eyes just fine I haven't retouched my eyes or anything but it's also not the longest wearing br blush but thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.